Right, guys, it is another episode of Stoppage Time. This is a Monday, November the 11th. It's a Remembrance Day here in Canada and south of the border. We have uh, Nick Borman from Sports Memo. Nick, thanks for joining us. Hey, Carm. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here, man. Yeah, it's... Um... It, it's it's a funny time here in Toronto. Uh, obviously, we're remembering our soldiers and such. Um, we're expecting a snowstorm today, which may or may not keep the uh, prez who does the videos. Typically, uh, although not this soccer one, um, it might keep them in Vegas for a few extra days, but I'm sure that's not going to bother them. I've never heard anybody complain about it, uh, getting stuck in Vegas for a couple of extra days. Uh, that's MLS, your already sure about yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MLS Cup. Let's talk before we get into the Euros. This is like this the uh, the Euro 2020 edition of stoppage time because we're on an international break, and we're we've got the final round of qualifying for the Euro 2020s, where they're gonna essentially 20 of the 24 uh, Euro spots will be locked in after um, after the weekend and Monday games. But uh, this past weekend it was the MLS Cup. The MLS Cup Finals, uh, Seattle and Toronto, third time in four years. I'm a huge Toronto supporter. I'm a season ticket holder, of course. Um, I had a play on the game, as did you. We were on the same side uh, on this, which was the total. Uh, you had a 5% play on the total. I had a 4% play on the total, and it came in. I couldn't figure out who was going to win this game. Um, I would have loved for it to have been Toronto, but um, I couldn't take a side either way. I just didn't know which way this game was going to go. I thought the total was the best way to go. And uh, you definitely thought the total was the best way to go. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was, I was flipping a coin. I could, you know, writing, writing pros and cons on both sides for Seattle, Toronto, and they were about dead even on either side. So I, I agreed with that hundred percent. And just the way both teams looked to, to, to go through the playoffs, it was, it, it was just, I was expecting some chances here. They were, they were taking quite a few so far in their first three games, the shot totals were there. So yeah, I agree. It was, it was over was the only way for, for me to look at this one, I, I wanted to pick a side, but I just I couldn't quite get there. Yeah, sometimes you you, you can't force something that's not there. Um, I think uh, your thought process is 100 percent correct. This isn't the Seattle uh, Sounders team of 2016 or 2017 that played up in Toronto uh, in the MLS Cup final. They're uh, um, they're they're a team that had uh, they were playing much better. Um, a uh, much better attacking game, uh, more chances on net. You know, it, it's funny because looking at 2016 and 2017, um, you know, the, the first, the, that first MLS Cup went 120 minutes, 90 minutes plus 30 minutes of, uh, of uh, extra time. The second game went 90 minutes. And through those 210 minutes, Seattle had a total of two shots on goal in two games. Uh, none in the first one, two in the second much better this time around uh and it could be expected and we saw the way they played against against the against lafc where they went into uh uh the bank and uh dominated that lafc team something that people did not realize they could do and pulled off the upset and similar with toronto toronto even missing their attacker uh josie altador for the first three games of the playoffs uh, we're still able to manage, you know, uh, five goals, although in extra time for them against DC United at home, went to New York, scored a couple there, went to Atlanta, scored a couple there. Um, so yeah, this, this was, I was a little surprised to see two and a half in this game. Uh, I thought we might've seen closer to three, um, but yeah, two and a half, a uh, great pick there by you, Nick. Yeah, I agree. I thought the total would be higher too, and obviously why we both thought there was there's a decent value there. So, um, but again, sorry that uh, Toronto came up just short. Um, but it, I guess it, it, get up next year. Hey, it, it could be it could be uh, worse. I mean, you could be the Chicago Fire, who you know I'm I'm from that area, and that's my team, and you know they stink. So, so you got that going for you. Yeah, no, and uh, I, I'm gonna make it out next uh, next season. I'm gonna make it out to Chicago, so I will uh, if you're there. If you're around, I will call you to go to a game or, or love wherever you might be. We'll catch a, an MLS game, uh, definitely. We're um, back at uh, Soldier Field next year, so that would be awesome. Oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. All, all the better. Uh, I'm assuming uh, uh, was, was this Schweinsteiger's last game? Uh, he's done, uh, right? He's finished? Yeah, most likely. I can't imagine a scenario. He's he's back, which stinks. He's, he's definitely a good player, so that'll – 
not that not that we have a lot to lose because we were already pretty bad, but that'll 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 hurt. Yeah, well, it um, you know it's it, it's funny when people talk about the MLS and, and we'll get out of the MLS and into Euros quickly, but they talk about it how it's the league that players come to retire in or what have you. Uh, but there's it's still a league with some very good players, uh, you know, in it. Um, obviously, uh, uh, for the Galaxy Zlatans out there, he's being recruited right now. Uh, I, I read on BBC by uh, AC Milan. I'm not sure how much weight that holds or if that's something that's just coming out of Zlatan's camp, uh, which happens a lot. Uh, um, you know, with their agents and stuff, uh, they, they sort of fuel things. But it's a, it's a league that's getting better, and it's a league that's growing. And uh, obviously, you have Inter Milan um, run by David uh, – not Inter Milan, sorry. Inter Miami run by David Beckham. Um, and uh, they're looking at bringing in some high-profile players uh, um, when, you know, when they kick off their inaugural season. I've heard them talking about Mascherano uh, from – Barcelona to Cavani from PSG and who knows maybe these guys in the tail end of their careers will come to retire in the MLS but they're still fun to watch um, I know it was like that with New York New York FC with uh, Pirlo you know I got to see Pirlo uh, a huge obviously uh, player uh, in Italy and we saw with Javinko in Toronto uh, a former Juve player so it's um, they've got to play somewhere, uh, and it's it's still some entertaining uh, football, nonetheless. For sure, it's um, a couple years off, but listen, the MLS is growing every year, adding teams every year. The revenue, the teams' values are you know at all times high. It's, they're growing faster than any other sport in in North America. So, at some point, the money will be there, uh, and when that happens, you know, players may look to the league. I mean, where are players going to go? Players come to play professional football in the United States because the NFL pays the most, right? Yeah. Same with basketball, same with, with any sport. Soccer, it's a, it's England, it's the Europe leagues. One day, maybe the money will start to move, and then we may be talking a little differently here, but we're probably a few years, at least, uh, from that happening. But it's trending the right direction. Yeah, uh, definitely. There's, uh, they, you know, they received, I think it was 11 or 12, applications for franchises there's a, yeah. a lot of seas that, that want them and you know um there's gonna likely be one or i think there's gonna be one in charlotte um and, yeah, I, heard, just read and I heard some people talking about well you know north carolina has uh, a big soccer community and um why are why is charlotte getting it and not north carolina well it's a simple answer to that question is charlotte's getting it because their owner is worth eleven billion dollars, so uh, <laughs> money, money rules. So there you go. This is why players get teams. All right, uh, he's Nick Borman, a sports memo. You can find him on Twitter at uh, Borman B O R R M A N double zero, not O's zeros. Instead, uh, to not to confuse you guys, and of course at Sports Memo, uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Carmine Bianco W T. Um, we are going to get into the Euros. It, this is interesting. Uh, this has been ongoing, but now qualifying will come to an end. This will be the last international break. Um, 20 of 24 spots for next summer's Euros will be decided. There's still four spots available. I think those will get filled by the Nations League competition, which uh, they created last year. And it was one of those competitions where um, I think instead of friendlies, they created this competition and it was to try and make sure that uh, big teams don't end up missing out on the Euros and smaller teams have a chance to get in where they normally wouldn't. Um, you know, I think it's uh, a reflection of seeing teams like the Netherlands, Chile, Italy miss out on the World Cup and uh, they just don't want those teams missing out on it. So it's an expanded format. But we're going to get into it uh, right now. I'm going to quickly go through I, I want to throw three games at you but what I want to do is quickly go through the groups I'm just going to give a a, a brief thing on the um, the eight groups that are right now and and who's been eliminated and who's not and then we'll get into it at group a we've got uh, England Czech Republic and Kosovo um, all three are vying for the top two spots England's uh, it would take a catastrophe for them to miss out it's not going to happen um, Czech Republic and Kosovo, they play uh, on match day nine. And essentially, the, I think the winner of that will, will get the second spot behind England in Group A. 
Uh, Group E, the Ukraine are in, but second spot's up for grabs, uh, Portugal and Serbia. Portugal closes out with games over Lithuania and Luxembourg, and essentially two wins gets them in. Uh, Group C, still up for grabs, which is a bit of a surprise, but Netherlands, Germany, and Northern Ireland. I'm not sure of the combos of who plays who there, but um, two spots are still up for grabs between those three teams which is the same in Group D with Switzerland, Denmark, and Ireland. Uh, still up for grabs. Uh, move on to Group E. Um, it's up for grabs as well too, Croatia, which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that Croatia game at you uh, uh, in a second. But Hungary, Slovakia, and then Wales have a slim shot, but it's uh, an outside shot. Again, a series of events will have to happen to get Wales in. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, group F, Spain is in. Seconds up for grabs between Sweden, Romania, and Norway. And I'm going to throw that Sweden-Romania game at you. Uh, group G, Poland, they're in. Johnny Detroit uh, is loving that, uh, being uh, of Polish descent. Second, uh, we'll go to Austria if they get a draw in their next two games. Uh, they need one point, essentially, and they're in. Group H, uh, it's still up for grabs, but Turkey and France have a stronghold on that group, both at 19 points. Only a major collapse can uh, get Iceland into one of those two spots there, I, I believe. Um, uh, group I is done. Belgium and Russia qualified easily, probably the easiest group uh, of all. And then, of course, Group J, which has um, what will be the future Euro 2020 champions, uh, Italy, uh, I've qualified and, uh, yes, I'm Italian. Yes, I'm biased. Uh, no, I don't think Italy's going to win the 2020 euros, but I will probably still have some money on them. Bet them uh, now. Bet them now. Car. It, it, you know, it, it's funny. Um, I, I'll tell you a story in a second, but, uh, so Italy has qualified already. They've won all of their games in that group. Finland should take second spot. Uh, all they need is a draw in one of their last two games. Uh, one of the times before the World Cup, when they were still going through the qualifying, I, I, uh, I'm staying at Aria and I'm and I went into the sports book and they had the odds up, uh, and I look and I see Italy is about I think it was, I, don't know, I think they were like twenty to one or something like that. I can't remember to win the World Cup. So it was my brother's birthday coming up, so I go to the window and I put fifty dollars on Italy to win the World Cup, but of course. Um, all bets are final. So even if the team does not qualify, that ticket is literally just a drink coaster. You put your beer on top of it. It's worth zilch. It's a $50 coaster. Italy does not qualify. They lose to Sweden in a two-game playoff. And my brother's like, well, I can still send this ticket in for the $50. I go, no, you can literally blow your nose with it because that ticket <laughs> is worth nothing. So those are the lessons to be learned on what, what happens when you bet on Italy. Uh, before they've qualified for a tournament. <laughs> so they've qualified for this. Um, we're okay. All right. Um, before we get into these three games, Euros, Nick, you are 60%, and this is with a big sample of 94 games. You're 56 and 38 in the Euros, up uh, over f almost 51% bankroll gain in Euro selections. Um, two things I want to throw at guys out there that are watching this. You get seven days of soccer from either Nick or I using promo, promo code STOP49. So if you head over to Sports Memo, um, punch in STOP49, you'll get seven days of Nick's plays for $49 or wager talk. Same goes for me. Nick has a fantastic promo going up at Sports Memo. Uh, if you go over to his page and you look on the right side, you'll see a thing called sports memo specials you can get the rest of nick's soccer for the year for 99 dollars um, this is regular 398 dollars that's like you're literally 25 percent of what it costs it's a phenomenal deal because nick is doing great uh in soccer at sports memo he also has a five percent play up already uh for the euros and essentially those plays are 40 dollars so um, instead of grabbing that play, grab his grab his um, all soccer for the rest of 2019 um, special for $99. And 
And Nick puts out a lot of plays. He's like me. Um, there's a ton of soccer games daily on weekends. Uh, it's a high volume one. Um, I, I'd have to guess between now and the end of the year, Nick is going to have more than 99 plays. <laughs> I'm probably going to sure. have more than 99 plays. So you're going to get all of his plays for less than a dollar. Essentially, you can't beat that. It's it's unbelievable uh, special. And you look at his records in soccer right now, uh, Champions League uh, in the money, Euro qualifiers in the money, uh, France, Germany, Spain, uh, Netherlands, Russia, Premier Leagues, all in the money. So uh, head over there, $99. Uh, pretty good, pretty damn good deal, Nick. Yeah, I'm uh, just, you know, looking forward to getting through the rest of the year. A uh, lot, like you said, of soccer action left on the table and uh, hoping to keep delivering some winners uh, as we go forward. It's usually a fun time of year. Um, last international break we have right now. We got the last uh, last rounds of the Champions League, Europa League coming up before the end of the year. So it's a lot of action uh, to keep us involved, not only in the weekends, like you said. We know there's a lot of action there, but during the weekdays as well. So um, I look forward to this time of year. It's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully we can uh, keep keep getting profit profitable all the way through the year. Yeah, and for, like for any of you guys out there that um, I just finished recording uh, Puck Time with Andrew McInnes of Sports uh, Sports Memo, who's also on a fantastic NHL run. I talked about um, when streaks and NHL teams and getting on um, getting on to the early part of someone's streak when they're or when they're running well, um, but doing it sort of long term. Uh, it's just, you can't judge something on a couple days, uh, or a week, uh, do it long-term. I have a lot of guys who follow my long-term NHL, my long-term soccer. Um, and over the course of the full year, they always make money. And this is the same case with Nick, $99. You're going to get the rest of his soccer for the rest of the year. He's making money now. He's going to continue to make money. Um, and then, you know, you head into obviously 2020 and we've got the summer tournaments we've got the champions league knockout stages europa league knockout stages uh, i'm sure nick and we'll do something for stoppage time coming into the new year uh some special promos as well too but definitely uh uh grab whether it's the seven day one uh, if you want to try uh um his soccer offer you know the first time uh or for the rest of the year it, it's a great promo all right let's uh let's let's head to this one um uh, Portugal, Lithuania. I talked uh, a little earlier, um, which is, um, where are we here? Group B. The Ukraine are in. Uh, so that second spot is up for grabs. Portugal, um, you know, they're playing Lithuania. They're at home. Uh, this The reverse fixture in this was 5-1. And I know that, I remember in the re reverse fixture, I had Portugal as a 5% play. They were laying two and a half goals in that game. I just thought that there was... No way they weren't going to win it by three or more goals. Uh, they won that game 5-1. You, you're laying three and a half goals in this game at home. The total is four, shaded to the over a little bit at minus 120. Uh, give me your thoughts on this. Yeah, um, surprisingly, uh, at least I consider it surprising, you mentioned the fact that Portugal is not locked into a Euro Euro spot yet. Um, they sit one point clear of Serbia for second place. So as long as they win the last two games, um, which we have Lithuania here and then Luxembourg in the next match, which, I mean, let's be honest, I don't see any way they're not going to win those two games. Um, so, you know, as we look at the total here, or excuse me, at the line in the total here, it's just trying to figure out, you know, is there anything to be, to be made as far as their spots? Um, you know, the, the, the excuse I'll give to Portugal for not having qualified now maybe is the fact that, you know, they had the Nations League to deal with this summer, uh, one of four teams to get to the knockout rounds, which they they uh, obviously won. Um, but they did just lose one of the two at Ukraine um, last month. So I guess you can't really continue to blame that on them. So, again, surprisingly that they have not qualified yet. But this is the best, best case scenario for them. Lithuania uh, is not good. They're ranked 132 uh, by FIFA right now. They haven't won a single game. In the group stage, um, with six losses, they did have one draw against Luxembourg. Um, but as you mentioned, in the reverse fixture at home, they lost one to five. It was actually one one at halftime. I was also on that game, Portugal. Uh, I felt the same way. I mean, they, they got to go in there and be able to blow them out. 
Uh, Ronaldo ended up with a hat trick in the second half alone. He had four goals total for the game, and then they, you know, they ran away with that thing and won five one. Um, the stat line for the game: sixty six percent possession of Portugal. They had thirty one shot attempts and fourteen on goal, which you know only in these international type of games do you see fourteen shots on goal. You don't see a lot of those in club uh, level competitions where it's a little more uh, evenly played. Um, Lithuania had seven shots total. Three on goal, which I thought was actually a lot. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't have expected them to even get three on goal, and then of course scoring one. Um, but that was at home here when they travel to Portugal. I don't expect them to get on the board. I don't know if they'll get you know more than e- e- even a single shot on goal, uh, let alone get up to three on goal again. I think we're going to look at a very very easy win by Portugal. I don't get in the habit of laying big numbers, um, but here I don't see any way that. Um, Portugal uh, is going to keep this close. I think they're going to come out. They got a full squad. Uh, everything I'm seeing right now is a full squad, other than uh, Jao Felix, who's injured, um, coming for this match because, like we mentioned, they need to win uh, to at least get in. So I think we're going to see them play hard, play big. They're not going to take their foot off the pedal, um, and I think we're going to see a big win. I see 5-0 honestly here, Carm. So I don't like laying these big numbers, but this is one game. I think the situation is okay to do so, and and, and I like laying three and a half here. Uh, good all the way to three and three and point seven five if it gets to that that next quarter of a goal. But I, I like Portugal here to win this one, pretty big car. Yeah, no, I have to agree with you in, in the sense of, and especially what you said about um, you never you you very rarely see um, those statistics uh, in domestic league. Uh, uh, games even you know if you know taking like a uh, Bundesliga game where you have like Bayern Munich playing uh, one of the lower um, you know one of the teams uh, that are in the relegation zone type thing um, you still don't see those lopsided statistics um, and this is probably the one competition where you you can lay these numbers um, especially when a team is playing uh, playing at home um, for sure it, it's just I uh, much like you Unless there's like an own goal, unless there's some weird type of penalty, I just don't see Lithuania ever scoring a goal in in Portugal. Um, yep. It would have to be a defensive error, uh, something against the run of play, because I expect Portugal to have those slanted numbers again um, uh, in this game as far as possession, attempts on goal, shots on goal. Um, it's one of those ones where it, it, it's lopsided, and um, it, it's not you're not going to see a Lithuania team much like you see some, in some domestic league games that uh, go on the road and play and park the bus. They're not going there to, <laughs> to try and lose. Hey, we only lost one nil. No, they're they're going there. They're going to play. They very well may play um, uh, some guys who normally wouldn't get caps for a team um, uh, and get some younger guys in, into the lineup. I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah, other than um, Joao Felix, I expect uh, all of Portugal's players there. I know that um, Ronaldo uh, in, the, uh, in the weekend uh, yesterday was subbed off uh, early in the second half against uh, AC Milan. Um, Dybala, for Dybala, Dybala came in and uh, scored the game winner there. Uh, it wasn't an injury that I read of. I think it actually might have been with an eye on uh, these two fixtures and the fact that Portugal has not yet qualified. So, uh, yeah, he loves, he loves the national team. He, he will do everything he can possibly do not to ever miss a, a national team game. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah. So, uh, I definitely agree with, uh, your, um, your take on this. Um, uh, definitely. All right. We're going to switch over to the next game. This is an interesting one. Uh, and, um, uh, it's, this, is, this has some great odds here. Um, you have, uh, this is a Group F fixture. Uh, this is for second place. And you have Sweden and Romania. Uh, Spain has already won the group. Sweden sits second right now with two games to go at 15 points. Romania sits third at 14 points with two to go. Uh, this game is in Romania. Romania is plus 180. Sweden is plus 158. The draw is plus 238. And the total in this game is, uh, is a lower than usual one, uh, but one that I, uh, is kind of expected. At, it's a split line of two, two and a half. Some books may have a two that, where the, the over is plus money, or some books might have a two and a half 
where the under, uh, if you want to take the under, you're, you've got to lay some juice. But most books will have a split line on this. The um, reverse fixture in this one, which was in Sweden, uh, Sweden did win that one two to one. Uh, I'm, in, I'm interested to hear your take on this. Yeah, this is like uh, Toronto, Seattle for me, where pros and cons list, either team. I don't know if I can really get on a side uh, so much here. Uh, I want to. If I was going to choose one, I would choose Romania only because, I mean, yes, they're at home. But really, if you look at the remaining two games, um, after this, Sweden has Faroe Islands. Okay, that's a win. Uh, and then Romania has Spain, um, which obviously is going to be difficult. The only good news there is that Spain's already qualified. Um, do they go guns a blazing in there? But but the problem with Spain is that even their reserves or their second second line is better than most teams' top lines. So Spain's not going to be easy. They'll be lucky to get a draw there. They have to win this game. Um, but that being said, I like the total here. Um, I like the over. I think um, when looking through this group, um, both teams are six and two over this number. Um, Sweden has had all eight games reach at least two goals and Romania has had all but one game. So seven games reach at least two goals. So as you mentioned on the split line, that's important because that would just be a uh, half goal loss if this game did end with just two goals. Um, but I like the fact that this can go over. And if you can find, as you mentioned, the books that are offering over two, it's probably minus 120, maybe one minus 125, um, on the over two. That's the way to go. Cause I don't, I don't think that'll be available Cup kickoff. I think it'll only be 2.25. Um, but really, again, I, I like I like the over here. Um, you know, Romania. If if they don't win this game, they're pretty much done. You already mentioned that they're one point um, behind Sweden. If they don't win this, they're going to stay one point behind. There's no possible way that uh, they're going to be able to catch up because we know we both know um, that Sweden is going to beat Faroe Islands on that last match day. Um, and these type of games, you know, where there's a lot on the line. They can they can go one of two ways. I mean, you know, if that first goal goes in, listen, Sweden Sweden knows that a win uh, or draw rather will will probably yeah. win this uh, second spot for them as well. So, if an early goal goes in, I think this game can possibly open up. Um, often, in the, what you might see here is because Sweden, of course, doesn't have you know a reason to go for the, go for the gusto here. They may kind of sit back, let the game come to them a little bit. Um, so a zero zero scoreline could carry into the second half, but if you can get that two number, I mean, you can even still, you know, at least push on the two late, late in the game once that one goal goes in. So if Romania goes down uh, one Oh, forget it. This game's going over quickly because they're going to press, they're going to move everything forward. They're going to probably get caught at the counter when they do so. And we're going to see goals. If Sweden happens to score first, um, it may be a little tougher, but uh, excuse me, if Romania scores first, it may be a little tougher. Um, because uh, they maybe you know have the reason to kind of sit back and just protect at that point and try to get that win. But you know, will Sweden come full swing um, after that situation uh, when they know they can probably go in and win the group in the next match? I don't know, but I, I think the over is the way to play this one. Um, I would try to get that two number because I think a one-one you know scoreline is probably very likely come the end of this, but. Uh, I think 2-1 either way, kind of like that the MLS cut we were talking about. I, I was looking at that 2-1 one, one way or the other. Um, I think it go 2-1 either way here. Sweden did win the first one 2-1. to one. So there is a situation here where um, if these teams, if if Romania wins this game and gets two points clear of Sweden and then somehow can go into Spain and draw, uh, and then of course we're assuming Sweden's going to beat Faroe Islands, these te teams are going to be level on points. And then the tiebreaker comes down to uh, head to head, which Sweden won two to one the first time. So another little factor here that that might go into uh, the overs favor is the fact that if 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 Romania is winning, they they probably don't necessarily want to sit back. They probably want to continue to score because they need to have the uh, better goal differential between the two teams. Yeah. Um, so they'll need to continue to press a little bit there. So a lot of reasons here. Um, it's not a game that you're going to see a ton of chances. You're not going to see 14 shots on goal from either team. Uh, but maybe we're going to see four or five shots on a goal from each team, which typically um, is is enough to get, I mean, at least two goals with a good chance at three. So I like the over here, Carm. I think if you can get two, it's a no-brainer. Um, at two, two and a half, I still like it. Um, if it ends in two, you're, you're just kind of, you're losing half your wager. So I like the over here, Carm. Yeah, and I uh, I have to agree with you again there on that one. And it, it you know, you know that even, you know, if they're, let's say, 
60th or 70th minute and it, they're tied at one, Romania is still going to be committing men forward, pushing forward, moving that back line up because for a one-on-one sure. draw is just not good enough for them. Uh, no. Given uh, what the match day 10 uh, games are going to be like with uh, with you know Sweden at home and uh, Romania at uh, at Spain, so um, you know it, it opens it up for counter attacks from this Sweden team, and and we know that they do have scoring on that in that lineup. Uh, he's Nick Borman of Sports Memo. Again, follow him on Twitter at uh, Borman double zero. Uh, so it's B O R R M A N double zero. I'm Carmine uh, Carmine Bianco W T. Uh, he's got that special on, again, the rest of the year of soccer, $99. Uh, an unbelievable deal. Head over there, pick that up. He's got a 5% play loaded already. So if you pick up that package, you'll find out who his play is. Um, or you can take seven days of Nick or my uh, soccer or both um, using Stop49 at Sports Memo or at uh, Wager Talk. Final game on the card, uh, Croatia. Uh, Croatia is, uh, they're still battling for a spot right now. Uh, you've got to lay, they're at home to Slovakia. You're laying a goal, minus 122, or you can take Slovakia. Uh, you'll get plus a goal, plus 106. The total is two and a half here. Your thoughts? Yep, both teams plenty to play for. Croatia atop the group, 14 points. Uh, Slovakia in third with 10 points, and then Hungary right in between them with 12 points right now. So a lot on the line for both teams here. Uh, Croatia, as most will probably remember, um, are the World Cup runners up to France. They have a very strong team, and I think they have one of the best midfields uh, in all of international soccer. Um, they got former Balloon d'Or winner Luka Modric from Real Madrid. Um, they got a young Nikola Vlasic from CSK Moscow in Russia, uh, Perisic from Bayern Munich, uh, Kovacic from Chelsea, Rakitic from Barcelona. You name it, they're loaded in the middle of that field. And if you ever get a chance to catch any of their games, I mean, that's where they win. And, and a lot of times that's where, you know, any soccer match is won, is if you can control the middle of that field, slow down attacks before they happen, transition um, well from defense to offense, you can you, you can really be the dominating team. And that's why, um, you know, you see these guys year in and year out as one of the better teams uh, in all of international soccer is because they control that midfield. And they beat Slovakia 4-0 in the first match, which – Four goals, honestly, for Croatia is a lot. They usually don't score. They're not quite that high-scoring a team, so I was kind of surprised to see that. I'm not surprised to see the goose egg on the Slovakia side. Like I said, they're a great uh, midfield, and they can stop attacks before they happen. Um, and in that match, uh, Kovacic and Rakitic were both uh, were both actually missing, so they, they should both be here available in this one. Um, Croatia, a very tough place to play. There are not many teams that go in there and have, have success. They're 3-0 and in the group so far. Uh, they beat Spain here in the Nations League uh, last year, and they drew against England, just to give you an idea of some other you know, top-level, top-elite teams that can't even come in here and get a win. Um, as I mentioned, they're not nearly uh, or not necessarily a high-scoring team. Uh, those four goals were probably an anomaly. They, they haven't scored that many goals in any of the other qualifiers. Uh, but like I said, they choke out that opposing attack before it happens. I think um, Slovakia getting on the on the board here. Uh, will be tough if they do. It's not going to be more than one. Um, and I like Croatia to be able to get net at least two in this one. So I'm looking at laying the goal here uh, with Croatia at home. I think, you know, at worst, we're probably looking at a push, maybe a 2-1 score. But I wouldn't be surprised to see 2-0, maybe 3-0. But I think 2-0 is a very likely score in this one. Um, and I think this one's going to move. I think we're going to see this line go to one and a quarter soon uh or you know at least before kickoff so i would try to get on this now it's already as you mentioned up to uh 122 125 in some books so it's getting close to that that time where the books are going to move that quarter of a goal so grab this now while you can uh but i like croatia here to uh to win this one at home car yeah and definitely and uh to add to what, what you what you said there you know this game is on saturday and obviously the um match day eight kicks off on thursday uh, it's one of those approaches when you're looking at some games, if you like them, uh, and you can sort of sometimes tell by the juice. And, and in this case here, because it's at minus one, minus 20, 122, is uh, at some point the juice stops and the goals get added. It goes to like one, one and a half. Um, and if there's still action on it, it goes to a straight one and a half. So taking it now, uh, even though the game is on Saturday, it's the best thing to do in this case because you've got them at a goal. Um, so you always have sort of that, if you, especially if you think they're going to win, you have that backup insurance of if they if they are up 2-0, uh, 
and they allow a late one and it finishes 2-1, um, you're not losing. Whereas if you wait until Saturday and you're laying a goal and a quarter and it finishes a one-goal game, you are losing some of your wager. So um, it's always good to have that insurance of laying just a flat goal um, in a game where you think the team is going to win or you believe they're going to win, and this and that's the case uh, here. So I have to definitely agree with you as far as um, uh, taking Croatia. Um, they are one of my f favorite teams just because of the fact that when I was in uh, Vegas filming the videos for the World Cup for Wager Talk, I, I did tell people to take Croatia at 40 to 1 as the long shot pick in the World Cup, mainly because of that nice same play. reason. I love their midfield. I love teams with good midfields. And, um, you know, France, Belgium, Croatia, they were the three of the four teams I said to look out for in the World Cup, just based on, okay, other than. Uh, having stacked teams, having midfields that are uh, can control um, the play, which is very important. Anyways, guys, uh, yep. we're going to wrap this up. Nick, thanks for coming on. Uh, once this is over, we're going to get back to um, – uh, we're going to do a Champions League knockout stage. Um, if we don't do a match day uh, five and six, which I think we will do, we're going to do a, a Champions League uh, knockout stage preview uh, once the draw is out in December and we'll put out a whole bunch of special promos to get guys on board and uh, making some money in soccer with us. But once again, Nick is 5638 with his Euro selections, Euro 2020, 60%, which is uh, a great record and uh, almost 51% bankroll gain just in Euros alone. So head over to Sports Memo, uh, check out the Sports Memo special that Nick has, the rest of soccer for $99 for the rest of the year. You'll automatically get his 5% play uh, that he has loaded for the Euros already. Uh, or seven days of either Nick or I for $49 using Stop 49. Nick, best of luck, my friend, this weekend uh, with the Euros. Thanks, Carm. You too, buddy. Appreciate it. Good luck.